Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Coffee with a Googler. Today we're reporting actually from inside Google's cloud itself, or at least one of the data centers that powers it. And I'm meeting with Greg Wilson. He's a manager on the developer advocacy team for the Google Cloud Platform. But he's not one of your typical pointy-haired managers, right? Greg is just, you've worked on lots of cool stuff, and you're going to tell us all about it today. You bet. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell us, what is it that you do here? Uh, so I manage a uh, team of people, developer advocates for Google Cloud Platform. Um, there's about 18 of us total, okay. and our job is to uh, go out into the world and, and make sure people know all the cool things that we're doing with the Cloud Platform. Um, it's innovating very quickly, like right. announcements uh, every other week, and <laughs> uh, you know we try to get the word out there. So. Now, th there's a lot of diversity around cloud developers. There's so many different types of developers. Oh, yeah. that it it yeah. must be really hard to have a, a core message to reach all of them. And how how it, do you go about what are, what are the opportunities to reach Yeah, it, it, it is. It's, it's very unique for our team, specifically in Google, is that we, uh, we're dealing with a platform that, that has a different meaning to a lot of different audiences. So, uh, for example, uh, Node.js developers you know, see cloud in a specific way, certain parts of cloud that meet their needs for apps, uh, similar with Ruby, uh, Java. Okay. Uh, but even things like data scientists, uh, people that are uh, you know, looking at six billion rows of transit data and they want to draw some intelligence out of that. You know, so we, we're trying to get them interested in it as well. It's cool. We have some amazing services around all of those things. So, um, so it's not just that we, we talk to developers in, in one language. We have to be able to speak in multiple types of languages to multiple types of audiences. So. OK, so that's quite yeah. a challenge. But you've got a big team, well-equipped team for it. It is, and, and, and it's, it's fun, too, because you get to uh, see a lot of interesting things that people are doing when you're providing the, uh, the computing power, the CPUs to, to drive all this stuff. You, you see some pretty amazing things. So. Right. Now, now, you mentioned that you're constantly releasing new things, mm -hmm. and there's like a constant drumbeat of great new yeah. technologies coming out. Like what, what kind of recent ones have you done? Oh, uh, gosh, so many things going on. The, the recent ones that we've been uh, doing some activity around, uh, we have uh, 32 CPU VMs now. Nice. Um, nice. Matter of fact, one of them is a uh, 208 gigabytes of memory with 32 CPUs. So the, uh, the, the gadget, <laughs> yeah, the, the gadget guy inside of me uh, just loves that, you know, having right. uh, all this computing power at my fingertips. And it's one thing to think about a 32 CPU VM, but you start thinking about that in terms of clusters. You know, I want to have a right. thousand of those doing something. Uh, it, wow. It's mind boggling what wow. you can do. And, and it's exciting for us, and we, we try to share that excitement with uh, the people we talk to. Um, and then uh, around the same time, we also introduced a new feature called Local SSD. So it's okay. like extremely high uh, I.O. bandwidth uh, drives that are uh, physically connected to your virtual machine. Nice. And we're talking like 170,000 sustained IOPS, which is, uh, you know, if, if you know anything about uh, disk drives and, and, and hardware, that, that's a stunning number. Right, so. right. And I, I know you've been putting all this together to try and come up with some scenarios that yeah. you can show it off that, you know, yeah. numbers of CPUs and IOPS might not mean much to other folks, but the, some right. of the stuff that you've been building does. So can you share that? Yeah, and that's, uh, th you know, that's one of the challenges of our team is that, you know, how do we, how do we let people know that beyond the specs, right? We can show them a lot of numbers of what this stuff is about, but until they can see the kind of things you can do with it, it doesn't really you know, make sense to them sometimes. So yeah, we, we're always thinking about how can we show this off? What type of demos could we build? What kind of a story could we build, more importantly? Uh, for example, when the 32 CPU VMs launched, we, um, uh, we found some software called Prime C that generates prime numbers and okay. using uh, some uh, neat, sim fairly simple algorithms, and uh, we generated a trillion prime numbers in 17 minutes on a 32 CPU machine. A trillion in a 17 trillion. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it was funny, I tweeted about it, and the tweet was, um, uh, I generated a trillion prime numbers because I can. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, why not? And you and said uh, it took 17 minutes? 
17 minutes for that. It's uh, the software, thankfully, uses is, uh, supports multi-core, so it was able to take advantage of those 32 CPUs. Uh, it, it's really a very much a CPU intensive operation uh, where there's other things um, you know that also take advantage of memory and you can mix and match a lot of the things that we offer in uh, in compute to do that. Okay. So. Now to, to rent a 32 CPU machine for 17 minutes, how much would that cost? Well, uh, well, thankfully we we have uh, per minute billing right. on that. Uh, and I think the hourly rate for the 208 gig one is anywhere from like a buck 65 to. 210 right. an, an hour or something like it's it's really inexpensive considering mm -hmm. what you're getting and that's part of the Google scale right I mean we were able to to pass on the uh, that scale and in, in incredible cost savings right. and so what that means for uh, geeks like me is that I can get my hands on some serious hardware yeah. uh, you know for the price of a cup of coffee I can have a lot of fun in 17 minutes so yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that that trillion Prime numbers must have been pennies at the rate you just. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. You, so what is that? A fourth of two bucks? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> fifty I, I, cents. How many universities and stuff have to go out and invest like hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars in infrastructure when you could do yeah, it this exactly. Way. And that's that's the whole idea behind cloud, right? And that's right. why there's so much excitement in cloud. You know, not just Google, but you know, a lot of the uh, other big names in cloud doing the same thing. It's it's a very exciting space, which is what drew me into it. Right. You know. Now, and you took this to the next step on Pi Day, right? I've heard some of the stuff you yeah. did for that. Uh, so sort of a funny story. We, um, uh, one of the guys on my team, uh, Ray Singh, uh, he and I were at South by Southwest with some other folks uh, okay. from Google. Um, South by Southwest was a few weeks ago in, in Austin, Texas. Uh, right. Fantastic event. And uh, we, were, we were literally hanging out at a bar 11 p.m. at night, and uh, you know when all the best ideas happen. When all the best ideas happen, uh, you know, having a couple of drinks, and um, uh, someone mentioned that the following day was Pi Day, and Ray and I were like, "Man, I wonder if we could do something with Pi Day like we did with the prime numbers." And right. I said, "Well, first of all, we got to have some software that can do it. We, you know, we have hours. We can't go write software to generate digits right. of pi, and plus, it's not trivial. It's it's pretty advanced sure. mathematics, right?" So we both have our phones out and we're, we're Googling for, you know, is there any software available? And sure enough, we found uh, this thing called Y Cruncher uh, by a, a gentleman named Alexander Lee. Supports multi-core. Uh, it, it will allow you to um, generate digits of pi up to like astronomical number okay. of digits. Um, so it supported uh, the operating system that we had. It ran on Linux. Um, it was very CPU intensive and memory intensive, a good story for our VMs. Yeah. So at 11 p.m. We, we were facing a choice. Do we, do we run back to the hotel and sit in the lobby and, and make this work, or do we sit here and continue drinking with our friends? And, if, <laughs> and if, because we're geeks at first, and uh, um, we basically were in a cab in five minutes. So we excitedly get into a cab, we go back, uh, we spent several hours uh, experimenting with it. So we were able to do a billion, like just in minutes. I mean, it was incredibly fast. And we were looking at the, you know, uh, how, how do our VMs work with this the best? And well, a billion is not that impressive. And so, well, why don't we try 10 billion? So we did 10 billion, and that ran pretty fast as well, but we still didn't feel like we really stretched things. <laughs> so then we tried 100 billion. Well, the problem with 100 billion is that it needs a lot more memory than the 208 gig. Uh, so we needed okay. to provide a uh, disk for swapping. Right. And as you know, disks are much, much slower than sure. memory. However, we SSDs had- SSDs not bad, right? Exactly. And with local SSDs, which are like, you know, these physically connected devices to your VM, they're extremely fast. So that's where that 170,000 IOPS comes into play. Got it. So we thought, hey, here's a great opportunity. We're about 12.05 AM at this point. So now we're, we're playing around- So it's only an hour in. Oh yeah, we're, okay. we're still just getting started. So we, um, uh, so we provision out the local SSDs, we fire up a VM with them connected and we, play around with the parameters of the software. And uh, we had 1.5 terabytes of local SSD connected. Okay. Because uh, not only do you need it for the swap, but the output file itself, if you're going to generate 100 billion digits of pi, that's a 100 file. billion characters in a file somewhere, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, we actually dabbled with doing a trillion digits, but it was going to take more time. <laughs> it, it was going to go beyond pi day. And we needed to, to go to bed. And we, <laughs> and we were getting sleepy at this point. So. Uh, so anyway, uh, Ray's on one uh, one laptop. I'm on the other. We're, we're experimenting with different parameters, and we and we found the perfect mix. And, and thankfully, this is right in Ray's wheelhouse. You know, so okay. we made a great nice. team on this. And um, so about 3 a.m., we kick off what we think is going to be the job. And uh, you know, we call it a night. And so the next morning, you know, we excitedly log back into the terminal, and it had finished, and it ran at about 
5.3 hours and generated uh, 100 billion digits. 100 billion in five hours, wow. Yeah, and so then we did a, a fun tweet and celebration of Pi Day. Uh, Ray and I generated 100 billion digits of Pi and we, we put it out there. And this is getting back to the developer advocacy job, right? right. We're trying to generate some buzz and show people the, the cool things you can do with this, this technology and this platform. Um, and that tweet did really well. I mean, it, it took off, you know, it caught in some of the uh, excitement of Pi Day. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was, was tweeting about Pi, Pi Day. We were really hoping he would catch our tweet. <laughs> and a, a few people actually pointed him to it, but he's probably got other things he's, on his he, mind. He's probably watching our show now. So he yeah, I'm sure he will. So he missed his opportunity, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, the next Pi Day of his makeup. But, um, so yeah, and so that was a fun day. We got a good amount of buzz out of that. We, we high five because that was uh, developer advocacy uh, yeah. success, it's a big right? Win, right? So now we want to take it to the, uh, the next level and uh, try to break the uh, some records uh, okay. on speed. There is um, on the y the site that has Y Cruncher. There are documented records of how long how long it takes to do these. We actually broke a couple of records. Okay. Uh, with what we're doing, but we don't want to publish those yet because we want to go for a bigger record. So okay. nice. we want to do a trillion digits next. Uh, that's very feasible. But the r the world record for Pi is thirteen point three trillion. Okay. Um, the current record was done on a uh, workstation with. Uh, nearly 300 terabytes of, of drives attached to it for swap, and it ran for 208 days. Wow. But that's a workstation with a bunch of drives. I've got Google data centers at my fingertips. Nice. I should be able to beat that, right? So it's more challenging than you might think. So we're going to be working on that, so hopefully we'll be talking in a cool. few months about yeah. how we now hold the world record, right? Yeah, we're so celebrating you breaking the record. We'll see what happens. Nice. Yeah. And when you did the 100 billion, like mm -hmm. for five hours, uh, mm -hmm. again, just thinking in terms of cost, sure. because it's just the two of you and your laptops. Yep. Terminaling into a cloud server somewhere, yep. and you know, compared to the having the dedicated hardware for it, the cost must have been a lot lower. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was cheaper than the two drinks we were drinking when we left the bar. <laughs> it literally was. It was for for the Pi Day specifically, the local SSDs we only charge for the storage I mean, for the for the drives themselves. Uh, you don't get charged for the bandwidth because they're physically connected, right? Um, and then the virtual machine is the uh, you know the per hour pricing okay. uh, per minute, but um, yeah. you had um, it for five hours, so. right? So right. you know you're looking, I mean, no more than fifteen dollars, probably a little less than fifteen bucks. To, wow. So to it wasn't even something. particularly expensive drinks. No, it wasn't. It was. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's the beauty of this, right? right. So, so and we're having fun with this. There's not a practical, a lot of practical use to this other than some some sure. buzz, but. You know, you think about a lot of the research that's going on, a lot of the computing power that's needed, and especially when you start thinking beyond a single VM, and you think, okay, that times a thousand or ten thousand right. uh, VMs in a cluster, uh, you, you can really start doing some some game changing things. Absolutely, so, yeah, sounds cool. Now, for folks who are watching the show, that mm -hmm. who might want to start dabbling in this and maybe calculate some other numbers, yep. and how would they get started? What's a good uh, best starting place? Is just go to cloud.google.com. Okay. Um, we actually have a, a trial that you can sign up for. You get uh, $300 uh, for a couple of months of playing around, $300 okay. for 60 days. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with $300. I mean, you know, just based on what we just yeah. talked about. That's uh, 20 times your pie calculation. Yeah, right? you could do a lot of digits of pie. Hopefully, you'll do something more exciting than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you, you can't miss the free trial button. It's, it's everywhere. Um, okay. And there's documentation. I mean, we've only touched on virtual machines. We're starting to do a lot of exciting stuff around containers. Okay. Uh, with uh, Container Engine, uh, BigQuery, the big, the very large data analysis that we mentioned earlier, um, you know, Kubernetes project. There's there's so many amazing things going on in cloud that uh, I think people will be surprised what we're doing. Cool, yep. and and it's all summarized on cloud.google.com. It is, yeah. Everything okay. you find. Thanks, Greg. That was so cool. Lots of great stories. Oh, thanks. Appreciate you having me. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. For more great videos on Google Developer topics and on Google Cloud and everything else that we do, take a look at the Google Developers channel and subscribe to us. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Greg, yep. please leave them in the comments below. And thanks so much. <laughs>